Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Industrial Packaging Podcast with me, your host, Nathan Duby, Digital Marketing Specialist at Industrial Packaging. On today's episode, we are going to discuss the top three types of strapping material and their uses. So without further ado, let's jump into today's topic. You know that strapping can be used to bundle products together, reinforce cartons, and to secure items to pallets for shipment. These strapping materials come in a variety of options, but how do you know which is best for your application? Your options can be filtered down into three primary categories, polypropylene, or PP, polyester, or PET, and steel. Strapping materials are used primarily for bundling products together and securing pallet loads during transport and storage. When used for palletizing, it is often complemented with the additional security of stretch wrap. Being a market leader in supplying strapping materials to companies of all sizes, we've been able to help many brands overcome the challenges of securing your products from shipment to shelf. You might find yourself with a lot of questions when trying to find the best strapping material for your needs. For example, which type of strapping material is ideal for my application and how does it function? Or what is the difference between virgin and recycled strapping? Regardless of your questions, on today's episode, we're going to help you find out how these materials work and which will be the best fit to optimize the security and unitizing of your products. First up, we have polypropylene strapping and its uses. Polypropylene strapping is one of the most common types of strapping and comes in a variety of tensile strengths, widths, and core sizes depending on your application. It's almost always embossed, giving it additional strength and texture for better friction. Embossing also significantly reduces dust created during the strapping process. Polypropylene strapping can be applied manually with buckles or hand tools up to fully automated strapping machines. Polypropylene strapping stretches around 25% when applying. However, it recovers about 10% back shortly after. As a package or pallet settles, the strap will retain some tension. Polyester and steel will not recover as your package and pallet settles. Unless otherwise formulated, plain polypropylene strapping can be sensitive to UV light degradation and is sometimes negatively impacted by elevated temperatures. By selecting the proper formulation of polypropylene strapping with your supplier, you won't have to worry about these downsides. Some new formulations negate most of these issues. For example, Dineric Polychem's Ultraband polyester strapping can handle weighty loads of up to 2,000 pounds of tensile strength, but it does have a higher price point. Most alternative polypropylene strapping materials are generally less expensive than polyester, making them very economical. Now, let's explore some of the best uses for polypropylene strapping. Polypropylene strapping is exceptionally versatile and can be used on various applications, including the following items. Printed materials such as newspapers and magazines, direct mail, millwork such as moldings and banisters, flooring like hardwoods and laminates, appliances, clothing, foods for distribution centers that supply grocery stores like meats, produce, and other fresh and frozen foods, pharmaceutical and drugstore distribution centers, and hay baling. This list should give you the overall idea. Polypropylene can be used in almost any strapping application. In one of our customers' applications, a 2,000 pound cradle load is easily secured with only four straps. Next up, we have polyester strapping. Polyester strapping is generally smooth in texture, but can also be embossed. Most polyester strapping is created from recycled materials. Here's a fun fact. You will notice that most polyester strapping is green. This color is due to being created from plastic bottles. Most ginger ale bottles and 7-Up bottles are green, and these significantly impact the color of this type of strapping. Heavy-duty polyester strapping has a higher tensile strength than steel and has decent thermal tolerance. It also has a lesser amount of tension decay over polypropylene, which means it holds the tension for a longer period of time. This is important to keep in mind for cross-country hauls from one destination to another, or multiple stops along the path to the load's final destination. There is also a polyester corded strapping, which is easily tied by hand with a wire buckle. It is a cloth material glued together, so there is no stretch available, but it is very flexible. There are new formulations available as well, such as Dineric Polychem's Ultraband Polyester Strapping, which can handle weighty loads up to 2,000 pounds of tensile strength. This strapping does have a higher price point, though. So, what are the best uses for polyester strapping? Polyester strapping is best used for rigid loads and helps to absorb impact during transit. 
It's also a better alternative when you need higher initial tension to contain loads when compared to polypropylene strapping. This type of strapping is best suited for metals, lumber, pallets of bottles and cans, bricks, or tiles. It is also excellent for stabilizing and palletizing various types of heavy loads. Finally, we come to steel strapping. Steel strapping is becoming a lesser used option, but has historically been utilized in mostly railroad shipped applications. It is required by the government, or rather the Association of American Railroads, for railroad transport where the load is not held within a container. There are a few AAR approved polypropylene and polyester strapping options available. So, if you prefer one of these, inquire with one of our reps at our website, industrialpackaging.com. Few places use steel for packaging that cannot use polypropylene or polyester strapping. Most steel strapping is made of stainless steel. When steel strapping is bent at a right angle, like wrapping around the edges of a pallet, for example, steel strapping loses half of its strength. Okay, what are the best uses for steel strapping? Steel strapping is the oldest and most heavy duty of the top three strapping material options. It is best used in heavy duty applications. Steel does not expand or contract with the load once it is secured. It stays. So in that respect, the best applications for steel strapping include heavy manufacturing and industrial equipment, steel coils, construction materials, bundling metals, baling wire, secure enclosure of metal containers, and railroad shipping. Now that you understand the top three different types of strapping, you're probably wondering, what factors should you consider when choosing a strapping material? First things first, you're going to want to consider the product dimensions. The most important factors to consider when selecting your strapping material will be the size, weight, and oddly enough, awkwardness of your product. An example of a product that's very awkward to package would be a refrigerator. When shipped, refrigerators are usually strapped to a pallet that is the same width of the base. With fridges being top heavy, you will want to make sure that you have enough strength in your strapping to maintain stability in transit. Some businesses want to overstrap for added security. However, with the right sized, proper material, you can reduce wasted material and secure your loads properly. The next most important item to consider is shipping distance. If your product is shipping long distances, you will want a more sturdy strap to resist the transport movement. For a long haul carrying a heavy load, you will not want to use 1 fourth of an inch wide strap. The thinner strap will not have the strength to manage the load, so you will want something with more width and strength. As a general rule of thumb, the more likely your products are to shift during travel, the wider the strapping will have to be. If your products tend to settle during shipment, for example printed materials, polypropylene is an excellent option because it can stretch and maintain integrity. Polyester is less likely to stretch. Next up, we have tensile strength. Tensile strength is the amount of force required to break a strap. The break strength is dependent upon the method of strapping, the number of straps used per load, and the size of the strapping, as well as the overall weight of the products being strapped. It's essential to speak with your supplier about optimal strap sizing to eliminate breaking. Moving on from there, we come to method of strapping. How you strap your products is very important in selecting the ideal strapping material. If you are only strapping 10 shoebox sized products a day, manual strapping tools are a perfect option. If, however, you are strapping 100 shoe size boxes per day, you will want to consider a semi automatic or automatic machine. Finally, you have to decide if you want to use virgin versus recycled strapping. When considering machine strapping, you will be best suited with virgin strapping material. Virgin strapping differs from recycled strapping in how it's created and how it can be used. Virgin strapping is produced purely from new polymers and practically eliminates camber. Virgin strap also reduces the amount of dust created by semi and automatic machines, reducing downtime and maintenance costs. When using machinery, a recycled strap will often have irregularities or camber. Camber is the amount of curve or irregularity in strapping. When using machinery, it's essential to have as little camber as possible to reduce machinery issues during the strapping process. If you are strapping manually, the camber is not as much of a problem. Too much camber can cause the strap to come out of place, causing damage to the machinery, and create safety hazards. Although recycled strap is around half the cost of virgin strapping material, it's important to consider consistency over initial expense. Machinery damage from recycled strapping will cost more in the long haul for repairs than sticking with the ideal virgin strapping solution. Most white strapping is virgin material and machine grade. Black strapping is almost always going to have some reprocessed materials within it. 
Okay, so with all this information in mind, you're probably wondering, how do you choose the right strapping material? With all of the information provided in this episode, you should be in an excellent place to start your strapping selection. Our years in business and knowledge will give you a step ahead, so get in touch with our team at industrialpackaging.com. We can discuss your project and determine the ultimate sizing, pricing, and tools to set you up for strapping with ease. All right, folks, that does it for another episode of the Industrial Packaging Podcast with me, your host, Nathan Duby, Digital Marketing Specialist at Industrial Packaging. I hope you enjoyed this episode and will tune in for the next one. But until then, I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.